Hatorio, Ad Bellum Contra Barbaros, an exhortation to war against the barbarians. Marsilio Ficino, the Florentine, to the most highly favored King Matthias of Hungary, prophesies security and peace, victory and war, and everlasting glory and victory. Most fortunate king, our Plato, the father of philosophers, often used to remind his chosen disciples Xenocrates and Dion to sacrifice attentively to the graces, so that they should become more gracious and agreeable. For although they were saintly men, they were rather austere and gloomy men that would seem fitting for philosophers. As our Plato once had to act towards his two disciples, so I see I must now act towards my twin books of letters, as if they were my children. For I have become pregnant with a frigid seed, so to speak, and to have produced rather more austere books of letters than is becoming to literary children. But who can ever compose works of gold or silver in an age and land of iron? Wherefore, in the Platonic tradition, I now command these books not only to sacrifice to the graces, but also to dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to them, and so go forth more full of grace and more urbane. Therefore, behold now, do you not see? Suddenly they have been seized and carry off. I do not know by what power, but certainly by some favorable spirit, towards your lofty palace, as if it were the very temple of the graces. And they have seized upon the going, hoping, as I think, in your presence alone, to be suffused with the most gracious splendor of the three graces, that is, of even-handed Jove, nourishing Phoebus and beautiful Venus. Thus their rather gloomy continents having been instantly transformed, then they may seem thereafter altogether brighter and more joyful to those who behold them. But you, I must pray, most fortunate king, may look upon the sons of Marsilio, while as suppliants they enter the sacred temple, with the joyful and lively rays of your eyes, as you are wont to look on all other things. For thus they will owe their existence only to me, but their beauty wholly to your royal majesty. And I shall be seen to have satisfied my master Plato, who commanded that only the prince be venerated in whom surpassing wisdom be joined with the highest power. Not only will I have undoubtedly satisfied Plato by his veneration of the inconquerable King Matthias, but also the other Greek philosophers, also indeed poets, orators, historical writers, in short, all people. In former times all these people sought nothing other than true glory and light of the highest zeal. At length, after many generations of light, they have fallen down into darkness under the ferocious Turks. Alas, what pain! Stars, I say, have fallen into darkness under savage beasts. Alas, the celestial lights of liberal teaching and arts have for a long time lain in limbo, or, rather, in a place far more darkly covered than limbo. Just as the very saints of old, formerly lying in limbo, raised their voice to the Messiah, so do these men to Matthias, as if to a Messiah, deserving of pity. These cry out with a continuous clamor to Matthias to restore them from limbo, or rather from lower regions, so light and life. Not only men of learning, of whom I have spoken, but also the many nations in Asia and Europe, in pitiable servitude under the inhumane Turks, like the children of Israel under the God-defying Pharaoh, call out loudly and constantly, I say to Matthias, as to a second Moses. For him... God will divide the Red Sea, and will miraculously throw open the impenetrable ways in all places. He will straightway liberate God's chosen sons from extreme slavery and affliction. In turn, beautiful Italy and holy religion herself, the mother of everything good, call it with continuous loud cries to Matthias that they will, by his hand alone, happily go free from the monstrous hands of the barbarians. Who for these twin children of mine, having entered your nourishing presence,
the temple of the graces, now pour out prayers and treaty to you for the common of salvation to all, in words of this kind. Rise, act again, Matthias, for the auspices are most favorable. Just as you have arisen successfully before, arise, we beg, O victorious Hercules, while there is yet time against these desire and unruly monsters who so wickedly ravage the countryside, destroying the towns and devouring the people. Not only do they impiously trample with filthy feet on disciples of all laws and liberal arts and, most vile of all, on holy religion, but also, as far as within their power, they obliterate them from all memory of men. Hercules, you have many times wonderfully vanquished monsters of this kind by heroic virtue alone, and you have tamed them. But at this very moment a new victory, and there is no doubt at all about what we say. Indeed, prophecy to you. A new victory is being sent down to you from heaven above, as once again you valiantly go to battle for the whole human race in every virtue. Indeed, for God himself. Assuredly, to you the whole earth will give support, for you the very sky will fight, and to aid your fleets the conspiring winds will come. On you alone Almighty God will confer command without limit. That supreme God, who has appointed the sun in the heavens as king of sky and stars, also appointed under the sun Matthias alone who should set oceans as the shores of his sway, and the stars as the limits of his glory. The 1st of October, 1480.